All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today's video, I'm going around to my fig trees and I'm going to demonstrate for you guys how it is that I'm going to increase the production of my fig trees this season. And I'm gonna increase it by, I think, around 100, over 100% is what I've estimated in the past. I've done a lot of experiments with this. It's a technique called rivers pruning. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is I'm actually gonna come in here and I'll show you guys some of the trees uh, up close, but I'm gonna be basically doing some pinching. If you're not familiar with what pinching is, fig trees are quite, um, kind of, uh, I would say that the growth at this point of the year is really soft. And so because the growth is so soft, people can just use their, their thumb and their index finger or their pointer finger, and you can just remove the apical bud with very little effort. And that's why they call it pinching. You just pinch it off. Uh, people use pruning shears, people call it topping, people call it nipping, uh, people call it summer pruning, and essentially just what we're doing to the fig tree on select branches, not all of them, we are removing just the apical bud here, the highest point of the branches that you have on your fig tree, and what will end up happening is that your fig will then respond by removing that apical bud you change the hormones in the tree, you change now the dominance that was once there, and it allows the tree then to branch out and have not one long lanky shoot uh, that's gonna fruit and continue growing throughout the growing season. It's very rare that these fig trees will continue growing and branch out at the same time. It's usually that there's so much apical dominance in figs that they just continue growing as one single stem. And it's not until we intervene by removing the tip either in the summer or in the winter time that the trees are more uh, ready to start branching out or even when they wake up from dormancy. Certainly, if we have a you know, point of our fig tree at the top and we haven't pruned it, it is somewhat likely as the trees wake up that they'll start branching out. But sometimes they don't branch out enough, I think is really the, the point. And we end up having these longer, lankier shoots where the tree can actually be rather sparse looking. It doesn't look as full. There's not as much leaves and foliage and branching in there. And if we can accomplish that, have more of that branching uh, and more leaves, each leaf corresponds to a fruit. Uh, because as the trees grow and as the new leaves form, so do the fruit buds. And so that way, if we can have, like I said, more leaves, you have more fruit. But the problem is sometimes people have trees that are really dense and they're really crowded and we end up having the opposite effect. In fact, there, there's not enough light getting into the tree. And then we have a problem where the tree actually isn't fruiting. So the opposite can also be true, but here's how we know for sure that we're going to select branches that when we remove the apical bud, they're gonna branch out and still have the appropriate amount of sunlight that they need uh, to set the fruit buds on that new growth. It's very simple. All we have to do is look at our trees, and that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna look at each tree, and I'm gonna observe which of the branches has larger leaves than the rest of the tree, or on average has a significantly larger leaves than the rest of the tree. Because what that means is, this branch here as an example has leaves that are larger than my hand. If I go more towards the center of the tree, the leaves are smaller than my hand. It's quite a big difference. The trees know how much sunlight is available to them. And so they'll make use of that sunlight by actually just growing larger leaves. So usually the trees on the outside of the tree, or let's say there's a taller branch that has access to more sunlight, you can very easily identify them uh, by just seeing longer, lankier growth that has larger leaves, and it's as easy as that. So let me just show you an example. Here's a, a leaf down here, and you can see the growth is, is kind of off on its own, you know? It's on like an island. This is a, a new branch that came out. There's one down here that hasn't grown a whole lot. There's one down here at the bottom that's growing pretty well and also fruiting. But this growth right here, if you think about it, has access to sunlight all around here. So if I remove the apical bud, which I will right now in demonstration, just like that, like I said, it's called pinching, topping, nipping, summer pruning, rivers pruning is what I uh, have read about it in Ponza's book, 
which is originally where I sort of got the idea for this. Um, just by doing that, we're now going to have branching in this area of the tree and the tree will make use of it because there is sunlight right in here. And we'll instead of having just this main shoot grow, because that's what, again, what would normally happen. This growth would just continue growing without interruption. It would continue fruiting. But now that one shoot is gonna turn into three or four, or maybe even five, maybe only two. It depends. It depends on how vigorous it is, how, you know, if your tree's planted in the ground, if it's in a container, a lot of factors go into that. But if we can multiply one branch into multiple, especially three or four, that's the sweet spot. We're gonna increase our production. We're gonna double it and maybe even more because then those new branches, as I said, are gonna continue growing and then they're going to actually form another set of main crop. For those of you who don't know, the main crop is what forms on the new growth. So as the tree grows, that's where the main crop is. The brabas are formed on last year's wood and there's only a finite amount of them. But the more our our trees grow, potentially the more main crop we can get. And so this way, we're gonna get a second set of main crop that of course is going to increase our production, like I said, but it's also going to make our harvest ripen. That second set is gonna ripen later down in the season. So this first set that you can see here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, potentially six fruits that will form on this branch that I pinched. These will all ripen and ripen around August 1st. They're gonna be the earliest fruits of the year. That's typically when my early varieties like this Rondé Bordeaux ripens here in the Philadelphia area. And then what will happen is about a month from now, maybe even three weeks, this tree will then start to grow and have new main crop figs on it about a month from now. So then we'll have the beginnings of fruit formation once again, again on three to four new branches and then those fruits, if you time your harvest from that point, uh, a tree like this could actually ripen that second set in as early as the middle of September. Once the main crop forms, as you can see, it's already on the branches down here. We're only 65 days away from it being ripe. So Rondé Bordeaux is really special in that way. It's a really early variety to ripen. And I can do this even, by the way, on the 90-day varieties, the mid-season varieties that I have here in my uh, Philadelphia area. I'm gonna be doing this to all the trees that will ripen within that length of time. I did it to Green Michurinska last year, which is a somewhat of a mid-season variety. I wouldn't call it exactly early, but I wouldn't call it late. It's somewhere in between mid-season and late. And that one also performed wonderfully doing this exact same thing that we're talking about. Um, I really experimented with this heavily last year and really wanted to see what the results would be uh, in an experiment. I even did some video last year of where we went through the season at three different times of the year. I showed you guys at this moment. It was actually, I think, sometime in May or June that I did this technique. Then I showed you guys somewhere around August when, uh, of course, the first set of main crop ripened. And then I showed you guys the time in which the second set of main crop ripened. And I'm telling you, the results are fantastic. So again, I'm, I'm identifying on this tree where there is ample sunlight, and I'm just coming in here and removing these growth tips to allow it to branch out. And again, it's, it's not the entire tree that's going to have this increase in production. It is um, just the branches that we, we remove the tips on. Uh, now, if I could remove the tips on all of them and have this effect, I would, but it's just not the case. So we have to identify, like I said, that very easy way to identify it is just look at the size of the leaves. When we got the right size of the leaves, that's all we need. Now, once these tips are, of course, removed, uh, and it's on the longer shoots, the shoots that typically are a bit more vigorous or getting that sunlight that they want, um, the other shoots that aren't so far ahead are gonna catch up. And so that can be kind of a good thing as well. It's just giving some of the other shoots a little bit of time to catch up. Maybe that's uh, not so important, but you know, there it is. On this Rondé Bordeaux here, it's May 25th. I removed about seven or eight shoots, uh, the apical bud on seven to eight of these shoots. 
and now we're gonna have a second flush of main crop that will ripen later down in the year. It's, that's really all we need to do. Now I'm gonna go around on some of these other trees because some of these other trees are very, very lanky. They don't have the branching that we want and you can see it on some of the trees, right? Look at the, the density of this tree. I can see through parts of the trees, right? I can see through this tree. It doesn't have the density of leaves. It doesn't have the branching that you would want. And so what I should have done to this tree that I did to some of the others, like Long de Oot, is I came in here in the spring and I removed all the apical buds. I did this before the summertime. So I did it as the tree was waking up or before it woke up. And now my Long de Oot is not exactly so full just yet, but it will be by the end of this year because we've allowed this tree, we've helped it, to really start branching out. Here's a good example of the long de oot and how that's affected it. Uh, but some of the other trees, we didn't do that. And so like a branch like this, that's really far out in the open, or a tree like this Nerino or Moro de Caneva, it's quite a lanky tree depending on where you're looking at. And so a lot of the shoots actually, you can see them in the wind, are really flopping in the wind. Versus let's say this stallion tree back here, which is one solid mat of leaves. You can't see through this really much at all compared to the other trees we looked at. So I'm gonna come in here and the same thing in this Moro de Caneva and do the same exact technique. Same thing with this LSU Tiger. You can't really see through this. The leaves are large, the growth is vigorous. And in fact, I would argue there's not as much branching as I'd like to see in this tree, but it's, there's no, there's no real sunlight to take advantage of in this area. It just, it is what it is. So I'm coming in here on some of these others. Let's, uh, let's do Moro de Caneva right now. We're looking for the leaves, once again, that are quite large. The shoots that are a bit lanky, vigorous. This is the perfect one right here. This section of the tree is actually very well branched. The leaves are smaller. Uh, there's a lot of activity here. It's very full, and so I don't have to really worry about this section of the tree. Over here, definitely have some of that lankiness going on. This one as well. Up here. Definitely the higher points on the trees are going to be points in which uh, you, would, you would certainly benefit by doing this. Uh, now, if you did some of the some of the uh, shaping that we talked about in a recent video, we mentioned how just putting the branches on a horizontal angle is actually going to make the trees more productive. And some of these branches, I just cannot do that. They're too high up in the air. Um, and so the only real way to affect the production on these branches, if I can't bend them, I can't allow them to grow horizontally or downwards is to then remove the growth tips. And, and looking at the habit of this tree and a few of the others here, I would have probably been better off removing a lot of the apical buds on this tree and probably some of the others that we mentioned. So each tree is different case by case. You know, this is a, this is a technique that you just wanna have in your arsenal, something to consider. It just, you know, to me, I think figs are just so interesting in this way, especially when you have a wide variety of trees, a wide variety of varieties, uh, because you, you just learn so much about figs this way. You know, you can't apply the same thing to each individual tree. And uh, to me, it just becomes so interesting that way. It never gets boring. There's always something to learn. There's always a way to improve my technique. And um, that's it, guys. I'm gonna keep going around. There's more trees to do, and um, I'll see you for the next video, okay? Thanks uh, for watching. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and check out my blog, figboss.com. See you guys for the next one.